Glad we're here. Yeah, there you go. Where are you at currently? I just got into Vancouver. Oh, got you're here. Yeah, I just got here yesterday. How is everything out there? In Vancouver? Yeah. Uh, from the airport, I got a 14 quarantine, a uh, 14 day quarantine to get through. So, oh, wow. So far, so you're just starting it then. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm a pro at it now. I haven't <laughs> gone through it a times. Yeah. Are you there with family or, or anyone in um, Vancouver? Yeah, my family, my, my mom is here and oh, um, I, my, my girlfriend's stuck with me for the next 14 days, 24 hours a day. So <laughs> either she will love you or hate you, buddy. And <laughs> right here, I'm going to ask her yourself. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, hey, thanks for, for jumping on and talking to me. Um, I spoke to Natasha and Amy a couple of days ago and, and got a lot of cool um cool stuff with them uh, about the film. Uh, I'm curious though, uh, what kind of initially drew you to it? Cause I, I read that you're kind of always been passionate about um, your culture and representation of Asian actors in Hollywood. How did you kind of come about this and, and, and jump on? Cause it was cool hearing everyone's story. Uh, right. Uh, well, it was Quentin who brought it up first. And at that time I was really learning a lot about Asian American identity and, uh, our place in, in the industry and this culture and what I can contribute um, to the stories that we bring. And the more you delve into it, the more, yeah, the more interesting it becomes to me. So whatever adds interest and meaning to my life, when I can, what I can give in return to the community, uh, I'm always up for that. How did you see, uh, how have you noticed being in an industry kind of internationally, really? How have you seen uh, things kind of maybe change in Hollywood or progress or maybe not? Like what would have been your kind of impression since you've been kind of working in, in Hollywood? Uh, it's so funny because the, the hmm, it's really interesting. It's like the more I learn, the more I realize we're in these cycles because a lot of people... Mm -hmm asks me this question and uses the word progress and just going through this film and also being involved in a lot of other films that has to do with uh, cultural identity and the so-called minorities, I realized that we're always in the struggle for, um, for voice, for become, becoming recognized and return. And really that's, that's the name of the game, right? It's to mm -hmm. let people know who you are so that you can have influence over your own destiny and so it's funny uh that's why the the word progress it's kind of it's an interesting word to me because having gone through this this film anna um, finding anna may wong and also a lot of recent hollywood projects that involve her um in trying to reclaim some of the things that she was she was never able to reclaim herself in her time um you realize that you know, right now we're all feeling like there's a huge resurgence in um, claiming the rights of diversity and how that could contribute to a richer culture and richer society. But um, you realize that's also built upon a lot of steps in, in history. And a lot of the friends that I work with um, um, of the previous generation, like, um, like Tai Ma, who's been doing great work, um, um, through a lot of stuff, a lot of conversations that I had with him, you realize that they felt the same way. I mean, we feel desperate right now because we feel like this is the time. This is, this is the time for our calling. This is the time when we have to step up, but also in their time, they felt the same struggles and the same hope. So the fight's never ending. And, uh, I don't know when we're going to get there, but, um, but it's a uh, it's a worthy fight to be involved with. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. This movie had a special interest to me because uh, I remember two years ago I was fortunate enough to to moderate and host a a conference in New York 
um, about the the kind of the Asian and American film industry. And you had a lot, lot of like executives kind of and, and big people from the American industry kind of joining the ones from China and, and various parts of Asia. And it was really cool to have these two kind of, uh, you know, sides of the industry and, and leaders in a sense of of this industry come together and speak about the relations between these two nations and you know how one topic that was discussed and I remember it was like a two hour panel it was just so fascinating um, these conversations I remember one thing was that you know the executives kind of from from Asia from various parts uh, of the industry were always discussing like you know when will we have such a huge market and rich for uh, American culture and film, but how do we make Asian films be accepted and watched in America, you know, and, and it's always been, Oh, it's a subtitling and whatnot. And then, you know, you look at kind of a year or so ago when crazy rich Asians came out and the uproar, you know, I was in LA at the time and how that, you know, kind of speaking to the actors from the film, how that, almost in a sense, open a door. It's like, yeah, we can do this. We, we have, we can make, we can tell stories about our culture that that's universally enjoyable and liked. And it is kind of a cool and an interesting look at how, you know, over the kind of couple of years, how now maybe with streaming, we are now opening up to potentially seeing Asian films, Asian actors from, from another word and accepting it so much more and hearing their stories. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's I think it's all um, it's kind of like uh, support and um, accessibility and platform. And right now we're at a convergence where all those things are available. But again, I realized that through time and 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 being um, and learning from characters, people, historical figures like Anna Mae Wong, you realize that probably in their time too, when she got a significant role that was a game changer. She felt like this is the moment. So uh, for me, that just means that you always have to have the hope because we have made a lot of progress and there has been a lot of changes, but you can never be complacent because the, the entire universe, the entire world is always changing. And um, looking at great films like, like important films like Crazy Rich Asian that Crazy Rich Asians that made um, such a tremendous stride in an industry. But, you know, 20, 25 years before that, it was Joy Luck Club. Right. That was the that was the great film. And it took 25 years to make another one. So, um, and then I'm sure people were always through a quarter of a decade looking, looking for that moment to come. But it took a long time. And just looking back in history, even when filmmaking started back in the 1900s, people were very open to diverse things like, um, I know, uh, I forget the name of this film, but there's a lot of, there's a great movie made about the indigenous population up in um, Alaska about their life. Hmm. And it was, yeah, it was a uh, eye-opening, award-winning, win um, critically acclaimed film. So these things, um, whether it's, at the end of the day, I think for me, I think it's, it's when the opportunity comes, whether you can channel that opportunity and gain enough support behind you, enough of community to, to make that little spark into a blazing fire. And I think, um, I think if we group a lot of those people together, then they'll make things happen, you know? You so that's why I want to Yeah, and, I, and you're, you're a big part of this because you've kind of done it on both sides. I mean, obviously you've been part of some, some mainstream, you know, blockbusters out here, but you've done films overseas also uh, in Asia. What, what has been your personal experience kind of seeing both sides of it, seeing the kind of the, the Hollywood side and working on major projects, but also working on films uh, in Asia? What, what has that been for you, that kind of experience to, to get really the, the two perspectives? Well, again, that's what I'm, I've been saying is I think right now is the right time for stories to do what they're meant to do, to build bridges for cultures to, to because cultures, you know, cultures can separate people because we're different and cultures can build bridges because culture, cultures and information 
it's meant to be exchanged, right? And I think the tool for that is stories. And right now we have the right platform and the right, and the, I don't know if it's the right one, but it's a capable platform um, with streaming services and the internet and, um, and people accept subtitles, right? Because mm -hmm. as you saw, Parasite won the Oscars last year and that th whole thing was subtitled with things that are just um, becoming more familiar, more accepting to the wider audience, we can finally start building that bridge in order to, um, to tell those stories worldwide. Because I always think in this day and age, when you're making a movie, you're not just making it for a local market, especially right now during the pandemic, as you saw a lot of films that are made, a lot of these Hollywood films um, aren't um, gaining any momentum in Hollywood because there's no access to it. But overseas, the greater population, um, there's plenty of access. Some Japanese animes, um, you know, the, I think it's called Mujin or the, the Demon Slayer is making breaking record offices over there, uh, box office records over there. And in China, everything's back to normal. I just came back from Australia mm -hmm. and because they have this thing under control, uh, much more than Canada and the US over there, people are going out and partying and celebrating and going to the movies. So right now, when you when you make a movie, um, I think the right way to look at it is not to just make it only for America. When you tell a story, you have to tell it to the world because we are blending. And, um, and that's the way how I want to build my career. I want to make stories that actually affect the entire world. And rather than looking at Asians as a minority, um, Asians comprise 60% of the world. So clearly we're not a minority. Right. So if we tell stories that broaden to the, to the entire human race, then, um, then you know, every, everyone can enjoy and share and celebrate those stories. Well said, man. I loved you, and and the, you guys did the Power Rangers movie the right way. I, I was so psyched uh, to the see you, and and really enjoyed it. After you know, there's a show a lot of us grew up on, and, and when you guys brought it back a couple of years ago, it was just it was just awesome. Tell me your experience uh, working on the Power Rangers movie, and and now that you kind of look back, what you accomplished uh, with it. Uh, yeah, it was a fantastic experience. It was one of the most probably remarkable experiences in my career. Um, that was the first major studio film mm -hmm. in Hollywood I was part of. And uh, being able to take a lead role in that film was very important to me. And um, it kind of set out the course of how I um, take my roles and run my career because I really try to strive for to put in something new and to put in something cultural, but also something that's... Um, that's uh, relatable to everybody. So in that film, I remember, because Zach wasn't really strictly written for a Chinese, a Chinese guy or written or an Asian role. Right. Um, once I got on, I, I thought that, you know, if Zach is Chinese, then at home, he should speak Chinese. And that was the first time ever that um, Mandarin was portrayed in the right way on the big uh, silver screen in Hollywood. Um, and it was nice for me because when I, I, everywhere I go, I see a lot of Asian people, but on TV, each time I hear someone um, uh, mangle my language, <laughs> one of my languages, it's very jarring to the ear because mm -hmm. our ears are very sensitive when we, pick, we, we can pick those things up, right? So um, I learned a lot from that movie. I learned how to work with people, what an actor's role is in relation to the director and how big of a change something like that can make to, to people's lives. Because as you know, Power Rangers is a, is a worldwide IP. Right. And there's a lot of fans in places I didn't even, I was, I was a Power Rangers fan growing up. Mm -hmm. I can say that proudly. Um, but going to places like Brazil, to uh, Europe, to do press, um, I didn't realize how many uh, people around the world that little TV series affected. Mm -hmm. And then especially seeing little Asian kids coming up and knowing that uh, someone is representing them on screen in a very heroic, in a very um, uh, uh, leading way. Um, that means a lot to me because it broaden up, broadens up their horizons. Um, you know, because whether or not 
whether or not we try to do this, but we put little kids in boxes. Parents do it, society does it, uh, the school does it. We always try to lead them in a certain way. And um, that might not be what their full potential is. Well said. Do you still keep in touch with the cast uh, of the film? And, and do you think you guys might do a, a second one? I think we would all love to do a second one. Um, we still keep in touch from time to time. Yeah, it was Dacre's birthday just recently. And uh, it was my birthday just about a month ago. And on, on those occasions or, um, you know, when each of us accomplishes something that uh, we know that's important to us, we give a shout out to each other. Um, I know the IP now is sold from, from Saban to Hasbro. And mm -hmm. I think they're rebooting another TV series, another movie. I think it's going to be a, in a very different vein. Um, so for me, I don't know what's going to happen with Power Rangers, but you know, forever it's going to remain a huge part of my life. And I know that um, what I did with Zach, um, judging from all the feedback and 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 congratulations and continued um, exchanges, communications from the fans, I know I've made a lot of um, impact on uh, on different people's lives, and that's going to be. That's going to be forever. And that's what mm -hmm. I take from it. Hey, you, you, and then you, you go from Power Rangers to Aquaman too. I mean, that's a heck of a move too. I mean, you know, the, not many actors can say that too. Uh, you know, having the role of Captain Merc, which is also an iconic thing when you look at the comics and the history of DC and Aquaman. Was that another kind of life-changing moment for you too, uh, to take on, uh, you know, the superhero genre in a sense and, and be able to represent in that sense? Yeah, it's, it, whether it's Power Rangers or Aquaman or um, we finally finished Mortal Kombat just mm -hmm. just basically two days ago um, or some of the indie films that I've been involved with and also documentaries like Finding Anime Wong. Um, another film I did was called Son of the South last year. That's right. And that was about, yeah, that was about the civil rights movement. Um, or or yeah, for black Americans in, in the 60s and the 70s. And that also changed me a lot. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about what it means to, to, to represent people on screen and what it means to tell stories that actually leaves an impression on someone's brain that they can pass on to the next generation and how that can influence history. So all of these things, um, they, like I, as an actor, I am part of part of my, I am part of part of myself into the character onto the screen, but it also leaves an impression on me. And that always stays with me. And trust me right now, as I just got back, I just got wrapped on Mortal Kombat. What I did with Liu Kang um, in that movie is still affecting me quite a lot, you know? So- um, In what ways? How is it affecting you? I mean, I was just gonna ask you about Mortal Kombat, but how has that role affected you? Well, Listen, we, we, we did uh, the principal photography last year and, and then we finished the film this year. It was interrupted a little bit, a little bit by the pandemic again, but, um, but it's, it's this inner strength and the state of calm that is necessary to complete the role. Um, and also that helped me a lot through the 14 day quarantine that I had to get through to be on set, right? So, um, yeah, and then also working with with our director, um, Simon, and the rest of the cast. This is truly a diverse cast. I mean, it's not just one Asian role that stands out. Um, we have we have we have Joe Taslim from Indonesia. We have uh, Tadnobu Asano from Japan. We have you know we have Lewis, who's um, British American, and then I'm Chinese Canadian, um, Max Huang, who's German Asian, and we all play significant roles. And if you look at the Mortal Kombat universe, a lot of the, a lot of, of course, it's a fighting game and we all know Asians own fighting by now, but, uh, a lot of that martial arts history is based on, um, Asian lore and Asian history. And so, to be able to walk on set and not be the token Asian where you don't have to fight um, to, to, to get something culturally represented in an accurate way was really nice. Our director, Simon, he was so open just to incorporate and um, trust us in that we know what we're talking about and whatever we do will be authentic because we grew up with that because it's a part of our history. 
um, I, I couldn't even reject that if I tried. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess finally, on a final note, is there anything you can share? What's something about working on, on this Mortal Kombat movie? Because I, I cannot wait for this. I mean, that the film has been done before, but now we're getting a, a new version of it. And obviously the game is still as relevant as it ever was. Um, what sort of thing we can expect is seeing in, in this film? Because obviously you're going to be a huge part of it with a, with a, such a famous character you're playing. But uh, what sort of expectation could we have, fans of the genre and and all? Well, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be pretty true. Um, and I think the fans of Mortal Kombat are going to be very happy. It's the first Mortal Kombat movie that's actually received an R rating that is at the probably core. true to the game yeah so but i think a lot of people that aren't fans are gonna love it as well um i know that simon had set out the way he pitched mortal kombat to me was through the a score a piece of music mm. and i saw how that took um the essence of mortal kombat and also broaden it into a universe and that's what he that's what he uh, that is what he's looking to build um, you know, in Mortal Kombat, there's seven different realms. There's right. you know, Earth realm, world, you know, chaos realm, mm -hmm. another realm, right? So it's truly a universe in itself. Um, and they're all connected. So um, this is what he set out to do. And I think this is what he's accomplished. And all the characters are there. And, um, and I feel like we did them justice. Yeah. Nice. I hope there's gonna be a franchise coming out of it. As we, it's not a one-off. We we only get to see it once. This would be awesome if it was more more uh, to this story to be told. Yeah, I really hope you guys enjoy the first one because um, it's just round one. That's you right. Know, we're still we're still going after that flawless victory. There you go. Well, I know you got to run, but I had a blast talking to you, Ludi. Uh, really, thanks for your time. I, I've so enjoyed your work. You brought a lot of these classics uh, characters uh, to life uh, that, you know, we grew up on in a sense, uh, at least I did. And and you did a really uh, honorable thing and hearing your backstory about how much they've meant to you and how they've impacted people. I have no doubt about that. And, and that's, that's a great power to have that, that in a sense responsibility and do it right. Um, and impacting so many people around the world with these characters and, and roles that that's really cool. And, and kudos to you for that. I appreciate it, man. Um, I, I think, you know, any piece of art like film art, it's not, it's not complete until someone sees it. So mm -hmm. we yeah. as creators, we generate it and the audience takes part in finishing that piece of art by seeing it and being affected. So I can't do it without you guys. I can't do it without you. So uh, I appreciate your time and especially Absolutely. doing these interviews to promote everything that's film related. It's really yeah. important. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep on doing the, the good work. And I can't wait to talk to you after Mortal Kombat comes out. I definitely would like to connect and and talk more in depth. So that, that would be awesome. But uh, Definitely uh, enjoy quarantine. Uh, luckily, your girlfriend's there to keep you company and um, happy Thanksgiving and obviously stay safe and healthy to you and your family. Yeah, you too, brother. I can't wait to talk to you again. It was a big Take buddy. care. Bye, Ruby. Right. Bye.